Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at aggregate supply. Last time we looked at aggregate demand. Today we're going to look at aggregate supply and we're going to look at um, why the aggregate supply curve is upward sloping in the short run, but vertical in the long run. We'll even differentiate between short and long runs. And um, we'll talk about the impact of what are called supply shocks and demand shocks on our short run equilibrium price and quantity. And uh, we'll also talk about reasons why the supply curve may shift. All this information is in your book and the chapter and pages on the front screen there. So aggregate supply. Like aggregate demand, aggregate supply is a um, curve that represents the combination of output supplied given a, um, a, a certain price level. And so it's all of the combinations of um, potential outputs that suppliers are willing to produce given um, the various price levels. And when we plot that on a graph, what we see is that there is a upward slope, at least in the short run. In fact, there are two aggregate supply curves, the short run aggregate supply curve and the long run aggregate supply curve. In the short run aggregate supply curve, what we're going to see is that if there are higher price levels, then producers are willing to produce more output, which creates this upward slope. There are lots of reasons why they would do that and why it's upward sloping in the long run, but only vertical, or upward sloping in the short run, but vertical in the long run, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But it's important just to keep in mind for right now that the curve itself is just a combination of potential um, coordinates linking price level with outcome or output. Before we get too far, though, let's differentiate between long and short run. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that in the economy there are literally thousands of variables all at work at one time uh, affecting price or prices and uh, output. What we're going to say is that in the short run we will assume that at least some of those variables become fixed while some of the factors that affect the economy can still vary at least in the short run some of them can't change. In the long run however all the factors that affect price and outcome or output um, are variable. And that has a huge impact on, on the, uh, the shape of the curve. So what's fixed in the short run that causes it to go upward sloping? Well, the thing that's fixed, at least in this model, is going to be wages. There is this theorem out there, or, or a theory called the sticky wages theory. And what that says is basically that wages tend to be fixed as a result of labor contracts. So your, your pay that you receive doesn't just go up or down um, from day to day. It's set for a certain period of time. In the, in the manufacturing world, you know, a union may negotiate a contract for 12 months, and during those 12 months, wages aren't going anywhere. They're going to stay at what was agreed to. And then only after the contract is over can wages be renegotiated, and that's why they're fixed in the short run. So how does this fact affect the upward slope of the short run aggregate supply curve? Well, because the supply curve is based on the profit motive, that businesses are willing to increase their quantity of goods supplied if they're able to get a higher um, price level in the short run because wages are the biggest cost of suppliers. And so if wages are fixed, the biggest cost is fixed, and the price levels are rising, then the overall cost of production for a producer is pretty much the same as it was before. But they're receiving more money as a result of the higher price levels, which means then that the increase in price levels led to an increase in profit per unit. And that increase in profit per unit in the short run gives suppliers the incentive to increase their output or the quantity supplied. So um, that's why there's this upward slope with the short run aggregate supply curve. In the long run, however, sticky wages in the short run become fully variable. So we assume in the long run there are no fixed wages, that wages can adjust instantaneously to changes in uh, price level. And as a result, then, we find this vertical long run aggregate supply curve. Because if prices were to double, then um, wages would double in response automatically because um, workers would insist that they don't lose purchasing power. And so the theory here is that in the short run there is an incentive for businesses to increase output because of the increased profit per unit caused by the fixed wages, but then in the long run when wages are no longer fixed and can be automatically uh, adjusted to changes in long run price levels, there's no longer an incentive to produce more because if price levels rise, your wages rise, your costs remain the same, your profits the same. And so we end up at what's called 
potential output. So the vertical long run aggregate supply curve intersects the horizontal axis at what we call potential output, which is also equivalent to our natural rate of unemployment. So this is how much we would make if we had no cyclical unemployment, and that's going to become an issue um, in the next lesson. So when does short run aggregate supply shift? Well, just like with aggregate demand, we say that if there's a change in the price level, then there's a movement along the aggregate supply curve. Because you will remember that aggregate prices or equilibrium changes when one of the two curves shifts, causing the equilibrium point to move along the other curve. So if price levels change, and we're looking at things from an aggregate supply perspective, that would indicate that aggregate demand has caused the change in equilibrium, and the equilibrium point then uh, moves along aggregate supply. If there is any other change um, that, that concerns profit motive, then, um, then we would see that there is actually a shift in the aggregate supply curve. And then we'll talk about what causes right and leftward shifts in just a second. So what causes shifts in aggregate supply? We're going to deal with each one of these. The first is changes in what are known as commodity prices. We'll talk about changes in nominal wages. And we'll talk about changes in productivity. When it comes to commodity prices, what we're talking about are the inputs that go into making things. Oil, steel, copper are all sort of the, uh, the components to, to manufacturing things. And so those are what we call commodities. And if their prices were to rise, then we would see that the cost of production goes up, which would then hurt the profit of businesses. No matter what the price level was, their profits are going to get damaged because of these higher prices. And as a result, they're will not as willing to produce as many goods um, as they were before, and that would cause the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left. If commodity prices were to get cheaper, then their profits would rise. They'd be willing to make more goods, regardless of what the price level was. Um, they would want to make more stuff, and that would cause aggregate supply to shift to the right. When it comes to changes in nominal wages, we see that because wages are the largest cost for firms, that changes in those wages would affect their short-run curve. If nominal wages rise, that increases the costs to the to the uh, producer and that has an effect in the short run on their profit per unit and their willingness to make things. And so we would see an increase in nominal wages causing a left shift in the aggregate supply curve. If wages were to fall, um, then it would increase the overall productivity or profit per unit for companies and they would shift their aggregate supply to the right. When it comes to productivity, um, the more productive people are, the more things they can produce in the same amount of time or with the same amount of resources, that would presume then that it lowers the cost per unit of producing things. Um, when you lower the cost per unit, you increase their profits, and when profits rise for a businessman, they're going to be willing to make more stuff in order to capture more profit. So, for example, hand price scanners. If you're trying to keep track of inventory in a large store, um, and you only have to hire one person to go around and just scan all their the uh, merchandise as opposed to sending an army of people to count everything by hand, then you're going to be um, lowering the time it takes to manage inventory. You're going to make it so that you don't have to hire as many workers and it's going to be a whole lot less expensive. So your per unit profit is going to rise significantly. And if that happens, then um, we would say that or we would expect a right shift in the short run aggregate supply curve because of this increase in profit. The long run aggregate supply curve could shift for a variety of reasons, and we're going to deal with these in more detail much later um, in macro. But just as a preview, I mean, if you have more resources available to you, in the long run you can make more stuff, and that's going to cause the long run aggregate supply curve to shift to the right. Um, if you have better resources that are more effective or efficient, that's like having an increase in resources, you're going to see a shift to the right. Or if you have any sort of improved technology which improves the perf uh, productivity of your workers, that will also make it so that you can make more things with the same amount of resources, and that shifts your, um, your long-run aggregate supply or potential output to the right.